Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me. Uh, normally I hold the camera myself, but one of the advantages to having a wife is that she can also double up as a camera operator. Uh, although my wife's about half my size, so I might appear to be a bit of a giant. But anyway, as you probably noticed, there's the sea behind me, and it's the Black Sea. And we're in the port city of Batumi. When I first came to Batumi 15 years ago, it was just like an old Soviet seaside town. However, in the past 10 years, things have changed drastically and it's fast becoming the Dubai of the Caucasus. Things that were cool in the 90s have fallen out of favour and you see quite a few disused buildings like this that eventually will make way for the new high rises popping up all over the city. If we were strolling here just over a hundred years ago, we'd be strolling around a British overseas territory. For a couple of years after the First World War, Batumi was ruled by the British. And if you're a stamp collector, you may well have a stamp of British Batum, as it was known then. The main promenade goes for seven kilometers. You can walk all the way along it. And what's really good about Georgia is like, unlike many other countries where it's difficult to get on the beach because the beach is all privately owned by all the hotels. In Georgia, you don't have that problem. All the beaches are for the public and have public access. So you can go anywhere you want. Lots of fairground rides as well, all along the beach. It's a great uh, holiday for families here. You don't get like young drunks coming here. It's more for families or elderly couples. I guess you could say like the Eastbourne of Georgia. So this is a good example of the Batumi of today. An old cafe there from 1975 from the Soviet period. And behind it, brand new apartment or hotel blocks. Every night here they have a fountain and music show. You can sit on those benches opposite and enjoy the spectacle. And if you look in the distance there, you can actually see some snow-capped mountains. So most of you may never have heard of Batumi, but I can see in the next 10, 20 years it becoming a very popular tourist destination, even for Europeans. It's actually a very quaint and charming little town actually. And very agreeable climate here now in mid to late September, still warm weather, t-shirt weather, and in fact even this week, we were still swimming in the sea, which was exciting for Katie because she lives in the middle of nowhere in Russia, nowhere near a sea, and would you believe she'd never actually been in the sea before in her life. So, did you enjoy that? Do you want to hear an amazing story? Six days after our wedding, I went for a swim in the sea. Now, I'm someone that's not used to wearing any jewellery. I've never worn a ring before, and basically, I didn't take off my wedding ring before I went in and I lost my wedding ring in the sea. The ring wasn't of high value, but it was my wedding ring. So there's a sentimental value, of course. So obviously I was a bit gutted about that. Kate was a bit upset as well, of course. So the next day I went to a shop in the town 
and I bought a pair of goggles and then I came back into the sea to look for my ring and would you believe in less than one minute I found it. I guess that's the advantage of having a pebbly stony beach. If it was a sandy beach that might have been an issue but the ring kind of got stuck in a little rock crevice down there somewhere quite far out admittedly but that must have stopped it from moving I should say the sea at the time was quite a bit calmer than it is now but still finding something as small as a wedding ring in something as big as the sea is quite something <laughs> 